All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Code Mentor Office Hours. Today, we're very excited to have Code Mentor expert Bruno Sutich with us here today. Bruno is the creator of many Tmux plugins, including Tmux Restruct. Today, Bruno is going to share with us some of the basics of Tmux, as well as more advanced use cases. Bruno, please get started. Hey, thank you. Well, um, hello, everyone. Um, so, yeah, thanks for, for the intro, I think. Um, um, yeah, so uh, what I have, have for, you, for you guys today is two short presentations. One is for Tmux beginners, and one is for a bit more advanced users. Um, so, you know, if you're comfortable with uh, Tmux. Uh, but I wouldn't like to start with those um, from the beginning. You know, um, I don't know, uh, maybe some of you guys have some questions. So I'd like to wait, wait a couple of minutes, uh, maybe someone else joins. And then in like five or so minutes, we can maybe start with this uh, presentation for beginners so yeah um, if you guys have any questions now is the uh, time to ask me we can just chat about Tmux maybe maybe you want to share something so I'm open to everything so that's it all right uh, Bruno what uh, languages do I need to know in order to write my own Tmux plugins? Okay. Well, I don't know. I think uh, shell scripting will, will do well, pretty much, you know. Um, so just bash, bash will do. Um, I mean, you know, uh, Tmux plugins, they are, you know, just executables. You can write them in anything. Uh, so it could be even, you know, it could even be Ruby or Python, but I've written all of them in Bash just because I'm sure everyone can run Bash, right? So it's, you know, portable, uh, so no issues with, you know, programming language versions, stuff like that. So yeah, short answer, just shell or Bash um, will do. What, what did you have in mind? You know, did you have any, any feature to add? Yeah, not as feature. I'm just curious that there are so many bash scripts nowadays. It's bash, it's sash, f, and there are others that if that differs or make some sense using only one or the other. And for example, if Tmux works in something else. Hey, you okay? You were muted for for a minute. Can you can you repeat what you last said? And go on. Do you, hear me? do you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So I was just uh, saying that uh, there are so many bash scriptings now that uh, we have three, four, or five variants that we use every day and. In, in what matters it makes a difference in Tmux, like for example, if I have Bash or ZS, F, and others, will they work there too or? Will they all work? I mean, it depends who installs the plugin, right? Uh, so if you're building a plugin, uh, you likely want to share it with other people. So, uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would recommend to go with what's more most portable, right? So it will be plain shell uh, for, as for the maximum portability. Then the next step would be maybe bash, you know, it, and it has a lot of nice features. I mean, I'm not like ultra good with, with uh, bash, writing bash scripts. I just, you know, uh, know, 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 know some of it. But yeah, I'd go, you know, with, with, with plain shell or just bash. Uh, uh, just targeting for maximum portability because everyone, I mean, even if you're using, even if your user is using like ZSH as a, as a, um, as their primary shell, they still have bash installed and uh, all the Tmux plugins will run on their machine because, you know, um, because, you know, they have bash installed. Uh, 
So I hope that answers the questions, you know, like short, short, short story, uh, like long story short, just use bash, and you'll be good, you know. Now, uh, my question was like, what, did you have any feature in mind or uh, did you have uh, wanted to I will work on something? Your presentation as probably there are country plugins that already do that. For example, do you know text expander or any expanders, phrase express, text expander and so on? Like uh, no. it allows you to write your own uh, shortcuts, short uh, okay. keyboard shortcuts. Like for example, I could have typing just at dot s and it would mean my server collection of uh, shell commands and it will pop up there inside the tmux for example and i could uh, as an auto complete in the idea it would actually help me to to type faster that's one maybe there are already plugins for tmux okay. providing that yeah uh so yeah it's an interesting idea so basically what you, if i got you correctly you want to do like uh, something like not maybe snippets, but maybe things to automate Tmux or snippets like it's snippets. It's snippets, macros, as Digital said, and snippets, okay. macros, and it's it will be my own database. It it will be my own sample, not others. So I will constantly keep adding their things that uh, I frequently use, and they should have extended capabilities like replacing rules and knowing the folder, the current folder and be able to navigate up, down and certain like insert dates and check permission and, and so on. That sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, I haven't heard of it, uh, of uh, something similar for Tmux. Um, so yeah, it sounds good. I mean, uh, if you, if you, configure a use case, I think go for it, you know. Uh, did you have anything else in mind or was that it? Like, do you have other ideas as well? Well, I have some something that uh, could be explained like a workflow and automation. For example, when I do git pull, it can parse the output and actually see if there is a conflict and actually do some auto commands that I set up like staging and merging and branching and so on. So it would be actually help me to uh, run the next sequence of commands by automatically noticing something. Like for example, yeah. I use Beanstalk message queue very frequently and for some developer machine it's not started and when i run the command it says connection closed by the peer and for example i could set up a, an observer on that uh, segment and actually behind in the bash start the server behind and it will be automated that is a very cool idea that is a very cool idea uh yeah uh, that would be really useful, you know, so enable basically not maybe hard coding that stuff, but maybe enabling users, you know, to any Tmux user to, uh, you know, define their own snippets, you know, define their own errors, define their own scenarios and just having some kind of auto command that you said. Um, yeah, that would be really nice. Um, nice to have. All right, guys, um, may, does anyone else have anything as to ask or show or tell? If not, I'd like to slowly start my, uh, you know, this presentation for beginners. So let's give it a couple more minutes. Maybe something will pop up in your, in your, in your mind. If not, we'll start this uh, presentation. What primary, what's your primary use for uh, Tmux? Development, mo server monitoring, 
What, what do you use it for on a daily basis? Uh, all right, thanks for the question. Um, so I use it primarily for development. So, um, you know, I'm a Rails and JavaScript developer. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, when you, start, when you start working in the command line, um, you quickly realize you need more command lines because you want to do all kinds of stuff in parallel. You want to you know, you have Rails server working and you want to execute Git and Vim and everything. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I use it for development and, yeah, that's pretty much it. So you prefer Tmux to having like a tabbed terminal? Sorry? You prefer using Tmux to using a tabbed terminal? Like oh, on yeah. OS, iTerm has the ability to have tabs. Um, oh. Like the, the GNOME terminal, if you're using GNOME, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely prefer... Uh, um, so why? Um, well, I've never really got, you know, learned and, and, and explored all, you know, all the possibility of, possibilities of tab terminal. But I'm guessing, you know, uh, I've seen some friends using it and uh, you still hit, hit the limit, uh, not maybe the limit, but, you know, the, the number of uh, tabs that is comfortable to manage really soon, right? So for uh, for uh, just a regular projects, you probably want to have uh, like four or five tabs or, or or terminals open. And if you have two projects, that's maybe eight, nine, or ten. And that at that moment, you know, things I think uh, would uh, start to be you know just just crowded, and you have you would have so many tabs. Um, that it would be unmanageable, you know. Um, that's, I, get, I mean, as I mentioned before, I didn't really, uh, you know, I never became a tab power user, so I can't tell for sure. But, um, yeah. I mean, I think I have like 70 or 80 terminals opened as, at a time. So... Yeah, I really doubt. Uh, I really doubt that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I really doubt you know uh, handling uh, seventy or eighty tabs in a in a, in iTerm or terminal app in in, in uh, on Mac or X would do. I think the greatest advantage is that you have persistence. And that means that, for example, if your connection drops, it uh, it's automatically detached, but the screens, you have it there, and you can log in there, and you have everything pop up and kept there. And I used, for example, when I, I'm about to leave the work, I leave my opens, my uh, screen opens, and I run, co run commands that are long, long commands. And I use the persistence for this one. And I like shared sessions. Like uh, I have colleagues which are less experienced than me and I allow them to watch uh, what I'm doing on a server and actually I can do help them directly on their screen. So actually we are physically connected to the same uh, uh, visual screen. And that really helps, yeah. for example, when you are in a yeah. different remote location and you are not uh, in the same room with the colleague and so on. Yep, yep. That's a great point. Uh, thanks. Thanks for bringing, the, bringing that up. So, Martin, you use it for, uh, for pair programming and showing your colleagues what you're working on? So, like in using Vim, 
as opposed to using full-blown screen sharing, which is a lot of bandwidth? Uh, this kind of uh, terminal uh, uh, terminal uh, sharing is only used if you do a lot of uh, deploys and you actually work on a on a server that's not your actually work machine and I use to teach deploying continuous integration and similar topics using this technique. I don't use for anything that's uh, graphic uh, or that's more complex than, than a simple uh, black and white screen. Use it for actual development, just for, for deploying your applications. I use it for actual work as uh, I have uh, sessions open for months as for example on a live server which is always on it, your session is open for months and it helps me there anything so one one session is only focused doing one thing one thing and i have multiple uh, options to switch and it's extremely great i don't need to open uh, 10 tabs or windows i have only one and it's there and I even can set up uh, alerting and beeping for example I want to be notified when something happens in a in a section that uh, it's not on front my on front of my eyes like set up a grab uh, that command or something and it will beep when, uh, when it's fun okay guys what do you say we start with this um, presentation for beginners uh, I think an idol here is a beginner you Martin uh, I presume and I see you're a pretty advanced user but uh, yeah, uh, I'd even appreciate if you gave me your feedback at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. Okay, guys. So I'm going to share my screen with you, and uh, yeah, let's start this presentation. Um, all right. Hopefully, you can see my screen now. Um, if someone could uh, just say you guys see the screen, that would be great. Um, yep. Okay, great. So you see the uh, starting Tmux uh, title? Okay, yeah. great. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, this is just a short uh, presentation. I think it'll be around 15-ish uh, minutes. Um, just how how to start Tmux, you know, how to um, how to learn it and why. And like the first question is like, why would you even care? Uh, why, uh, you know, what problems as a developer you could have that would make you want to consider using Tmux? For me, it was definitely uh, a huge number of terminals that I was running. At as I started, you know, um, developing more complex and complex applications. So on, on this slide, you can see, you know, uh, just a classic one project um, terminal organization. So you need to have one terminal for a text editor, for Vim. Then you need to have uh, another terminal for database access, something like, uh, for example, if you're using uh, Rails, uh, Rails console. And you need to have application server, something like a uh, real server running continuously. Uh, and lastly, you want to have like a free terminal that will be used uh, just to enter random commands, uh, git commands, whatever, right? So those are uh, four terminals just for one application, just for one project. And if you have multiple projects, it quickly grows. 
Uh, and on a, on a slide here, you can see like it's really like easy if we, with two projects to have nine terminals, and at this point, it becomes unmanageable. So the solution there is um, Tmux. Uh, Tmux is a, sh uh, a short word for terminal multiplexer, and what it enables you, uh, Tmux core features are uh, it enables you to have a multiple terminal windows within one terminal. Uh, a, a cool thing it enables you to do uh, is window splits, both horizontal and vertical. It enables you to have sessions, groups of windows, and persistent environment. Though if you're a beginner, uh, all these terms, or at least some of these terms might be unfamiliar with you, but uh, we'll dive into examples and like really, uh, I recorded a couple uh, short videos for this presentation, so you'll, uh, you'll get to really see what all these terms means and how Windows Split looks um, and everything. So those are just the core, uh, core terminal features, uh, but Tmux has many more uh, really, really cool features. Uh, it's highly custom customizable, uh, it's also scriptable, and since a couple of months back, uh, you have, um, you know, there are uh, Tmux plugins that enable you to extend plugin, uh, sorry, to extend the Tmux even more. All right, you know, just, uh, just uh, you know, for uh, just, to, to, to uh, mention this, installing Tmux is really easy on the Macintosh. It just brew install Tmux. You know, if you're on Mac, you, you definitely have brew program. Uh, apart from uh, installing Tmux itself, uh, there needs to be uh, this reattached to user namespace, namespace program. It uh, you know fixes. PB based. I mean, this is for uh, Mac users, they will know. So if you're a Mac user, just install uh, these two programs with Brew. And if you're on Linux, it's as easy as apt-get install Tmux. And you're done. All right, uh, before diving into the uh, into examples and, and the videos I, I recorded for you guys, um, there is a rec recommended configuration. All the uh, Tmux configuration is stored in uh, a file that's called .tmux.conf in your uh, home directory. Uh, and uh, what is really recommended for, uh, for beginners, you set, you remap the default tmux prefix from control B to control A. So what, what is prefix? If you're a beginner, this is like a new word for you. Well, prefix is a key or a key combination like control B or control A that you have to press before triggering any of the tmux uh, uh, Tmux com commands and Tmux operations. So by default on Tmux, this is control B. We want to re remap it to control A and you'll see shortly why. That's one thing uh, I'd recommend. Uh, another thing is, um, is um, I'd recommend remapping, you know, a caps lock key on your keyboard, keyboard to control. And this is done on a system level and it's really easy to do. You just Google it and you'll find uh, solutions no matter which operating system you have. And basically, uh, whenever you press caps lock, you'll get control on your machine. So why, why would you wanna do this? Uh, at the bottom of the slide, you can see now that with these two things done and these two prerequisites done, you get a nice benefit of you know, having to access this control A prefix for Tmux uh, it now becomes really easy to type. It's just two keys, one next to each other. Um, and this is actually not only my recommendation, a lot of users do this. Uh, it's really popular and it really uh, works well if you're using uh, Vim in, uh, you know, if you're using Vim, which also requires pressing uh, control key a lot. So that is the recommended configuration now. Let's dive into the demo, right? So uh, I think there's no better way to describe what Tmux is and show what Tmux is uh, to a beginner. Oh, okay. Then, you know, showing, uh, showing some examples and showing, uh, you know, showing it in action. Uh, my idea was to do a live demo, but uh, after doing some uh, research, internet research about, you know, presentation, I learned it's a, really not a good idea because a lot of things can go wrong so I decided to record these short uh, videos and hopefully you know nothing can go wrong with this so uh, oops 
Okay, so the first demo is how to start Tmux, and it's really easy. You just, uh, in your console, you just type Tmux, and there you go. You're in, in Tmux now, and this, this is indicated by uh, this yellow or green uh, strip at the bottom of the screen. So that's how you start Tmux. It's that easy. Okay, so uh, you, you know, uh, you're, as a beginner, you have this pain point of having to manage multiple windows. So how do you create those new windows on Tmux? Um, that too is really easy. It's just, you know, uh, the, the control A plus C uh, key binding, you know, so uh, it's just prefix plus C. C stands for create, I suppose. And uh, you know, now you have multiple windows and you can see that at the bottom of the screen, you have uh, numbered windows zero, one, two, three. So that's you know, how you create windows. Okay, so now that you have multiple windows, like how do you move back and forth uh, you know, over these windows? Like how do you navigate them? This also is really easy, so let's show a video. This is some output on the screen, just so you can show that, that you can see the difference. So that was, that was, uh, you know, uh, just uh, prefix plus P and prefix plus N, and you can also uh, jump over the windows with prefix plus uh, just a dig digit. So that's how you navigate windows. Oops. Okay. Uh, and, oops, no. Sorry guys, we're, we're replaying that video again. Okay, next slide. So an, another cool feature uh, of Tmux is window splits. And this is something you definitely can't uh, have in your uh, default terminal application and Tmux has it. So let's see how splits look like. There you go. So this is a vertical split and this is a horizontal split. And uh, oops. Uh, that is done with uh, prefix plus percent, uh, percent key and prefix plus uh, uh, double quote key. And just a note here, this is a pretty unusual choice of keys that we, and we'll show how to remap those uh, just, just a bit later. Okay. Uh, now that you have multiple splits on the, on, in, in one window, how do you move from one split to another? Fortunately, this is really easy. You just press prefix uh, plus an arrow key on your keyboard and you can move, uh, you know, you can move within these splits. So that is shown in, the, in this video. Now, if you're a Vim user, you probably want to use uh, you know, a prefix plus A, J, K, and L, which are cursor movements in Vim, and we'll show how to do that uh, just a bit later. All right, um, another Vim feature is creating sessions. You can think of sessions as a group of windows, and they are really good, you know, uh, to uh, group windows uh, to work on, on one project. So you can think of having one session and you can use it for one project that you have. Uh, in work or uh, your private project, whatever. So um, how do you create sessions? So this is kind of unusual. Um, so you can see in a video now we created a, a new session and it's indicated by, by the word foo at the bottom left uh, corner uh, on the screen. And the creating sessions is a bit pain, uh, uh, pain in the ass with Tmux, especially with the new version, because you have to press this call, then you uh, give it a flag minus S, and then type session name. So this is not really convenient, and we will show a way how to uh, remap this later. Uh, but this was just like a display how, 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 what sessions look like. Okay, once that you have uh, two or more sessions, you'll wanna switch between those sessions. You can also do that easily. Here's the video. So prefix plus S gets you a list of sessions and then you can uh, simply switch with arrow keys. 
Okay, guys, uh, this is the last feature, uh, detaching Tmux. It's really a killer feature. Um, let's see a video. So what we'll do first, we'll, we detach this current uh, Tmux running instance, and then we'll attach. Here's the uh, demo. Okay, you see now we're not into Tmux again. Uh, type Tmux attach, bam, we're back in Tmux. Um, and uh, you know, Tmux sessions they persist uh, only like they, they they live like basically forever unless you restart or uh, shut down your computer. So that's really nice. Okay, so what did we just uh, see? We saw uh, we we saw uh, how uh, you know how Tmux can uh, can be used to manipulate windows. How Tmux can be used to uh, create and manipulate uh, splits. Uh, manipulate sessions and we also uh, saw that Tmux uh, has some quirky defaults right uh, things like uh, creating sessions isn't that easy uh, things like uh, oh, what we what, like yeah creating splits with these um, uh, prefix plus uh, percent and prefix plus double uh, double quote uh, these defaults are not so good. So the next step for you as a beginner, if you are a beginner, it would be definitely to configure uh, Tmux. And luckily, Tmux is very, very configurable. In fact, any key binding uh, can be configured in Tmux. It can be changed. It can be unbound. Um, you can do practically everything. Um, with that said, I mean, you can definitely do everything, but there are some community standards. So, uh, you know about, I mean, I'm sure all of you know about dot .files. Dot .files are, um, you know, just a set of files that a lot of users publish on GitHub. So, if you read through a couple of those dot .files, you'll see that a lot of you, the users use similar uh, key bindings. And those are the things that, like, uh, we can really say that things like everyone has in their Tmux conf. So, because there are certain patterns with these key bindings, well, I would what I would recommend. I mean, one way to to do it to configure Tmux is you know go online, Google a lot, uh, read the blogs, read uh, other people's dot files, and just learn from that and copy and paste and you know uh, build build up your own Tmux.com file. But the other way that I'm going to recommend today uh, is to configure Tmux solely via Tmux plugins. So which plugins are we going to uh, see? Uh, I'm going to show you guys three plugins, uh, Tmux Sensible. This one doesn't uh, get you any new cool feature features, but what it does, it handles Tmux quirks and boilerplate configuration. And we'll, we'll see an example of uh, what is handled with that. Next up, we'll, uh, show, I'll show you uh, Tmux Paint Control. It, it gives you convenient basic key bindings and a Tmux Sessionist, and this one handles creating new uh, sessions in Tmux. Okay, this is a short video that shows how to install those plugins, but I wanna show you GitHub repositories of these plugins. So I'll exit this presentation mode. Okay, I want to show you Tmux plugins, right? So all the plugins, they live in, uh, on GitHub, github.com slash Tmux plugins. You'll find them there. Let's look at uh, Tmux Sensible. Uh, as mentioned before, it doesn't give you a lot of new features. It just handles the boilerplate. Things like setting the UTF-8 for you. So if you install Tmux Sensible, you don't have to you know, uh, pollute your Tmux config with these settings. It also addresses um, a bug related to Vim by setting this escape time option to zero. Um, what else? Okay, so this one is really common, uh, the default terminal. This one basically has to be set uh, to this value. And I'm not sure why this is not the Tmux default. But yeah, you know, if you install uh, Tmux Sensible, this is all handled for you. Pain control, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just hurry myself a little bit because I speak too much. So yeah, this one uh, gives you a convenient um, key binding for managing and splitting, uh, creating new pains. Uh, for example, prefix plus pipe, um, creates a new uh, split, creates a new horizontal split. A premix, a prefix plus minus creates a new vertical split. 
And lastly, team accessionist. Uh, it has this prefix plus uh, shift plus C or prefix plus uppercase C uh, for creating new sessions. I mean, if you remember from the beginning of this, uh, of this demo, you saw that creating a session is kind of complicated, but with this plugin, it, it makes it easy. Okay, I'll, I'll jump back to the presentation now and show you how to actually install those plugins. So here's the video. First, you have to clone Tmux uh, Package Manager, and this is an instruction on, uh, on GitHub. Then, editing uh, tmux.com file, and adding, I'll just, I'm just pasting it here, so adding all these plugins uh, that you just saw earlier. Tmux Sensible, Paint Control, and Sessionist. Then you source your tmux.com file. and press prefix plus E to install the plugins. And that's it. That's all you need to do. I mean, maybe if you're a beginner, this might seem overwhelming, but uh, yeah, I guess this is, uh, uh, this is the short route, I guess. All right, so what are the plugin benefits? This is also a short video that will show you like how to do splits with nice, um, nice key bindings. Um, and in short, I mean, it's uh, less Tmux quirks and more Vim-like behavior. So if you're a Vim user, you really like these uh, key bindings. So let's see a video. Okay, prefix plus pipe, AJKL for movement. And lastly, creating new sessions is just prefix plus uppercase C, and there you go. We created a new full bar session. Um, so yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, we're at the end, uh, and uh, you know, just if you're if you just started to uh, learn uh, Tmux, what would be the next step? You know, definitely, um, uh, definitely, you know, you wanna uh, you wanna explore it even more. Uh, you wanna look up uh, Tmux copy mode. So Tmux copy mode is something that, that you, if you're using terminal, you get that with just scrolling up in a terminal. With Tmux, you can't really do that. It has this uh, special copy mode uh, for, for handling scroll back. And you maybe wanna educate yourself on that. This presentation is, is a bit short, so I couldn't cover it. Next up, you wanna, uh, uh, Tmux documentation in the man page is awesome. So whenever you wanna look up something, uh, definitely uh, read up man Tmux or search it or grab it, whatever. Uh, then, you know, just use Tmux daily. If you're a new beginner, if you're a new user, you wanna get accustomed to it. So uh, what better would be than uh, use it daily. Uh, if you're into books, there are two books now, I believe. Uh, one that I read is uh, the one on, on, this, on, the, on the slide, Tmux for Productive Mouse Free Development. It's a really good book. I wholeheartedly recommend it. Lastly, when you, you know, get a grasp of Tmux, you wanna, uh, you wanna activate some of its advanced features. You, wanna check, you might wanna check uh, Tmux plugins, and they, they can be reached and, uh, on Tmux plugins GitHub organization. All right, guys. I talk just too much, but uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, all, I'm all ears uh, for all your questions and all the feedback that you have. I'm gonna stop. All right. Bruno, for the uh, for the plugins that you wrote, which were the, can you show the slide again that showed which ones you recommend for new Tmux users? Yeah, Please. definitely. Thank you. Let me just set up um, screen share again. Um, okay. All right. All right.
Okay, there you go. Uh, so I won't go into full presentation mode, but you can see it on the slide. So team accessible, pain control, and sessionist. Okay. All right, so hopefully you can see uh, the slides now. Uh, this second demo, the second presentation is called Tmax Tips and Tricks. And it's intended for a bit more advanced users for those that are accustomed to using Tmax. Overview, we're gonna cover three things. This is gonna be a, a much shorter presentation, much shorter, shorter demo. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to do, uh, you know, uh, you know, just advices on keeping your tmax.conf short, uh, a couple words and a couple of thoughts on the tmax workflow, something I've used, uh, I mean, I've, I've learned from other users online, uh, basically some, um, bad patterns. Uh, I'm going to bring them up. And lastly, we're going to talk about fast session switching. Okay, so first, keeping tmax.conf short. So what I've noticed is there are some users online and on the internet out there that have huge tmax.conf files. They're like I've seen tmax.conf files with like more than 200 lines of code, and that's just huge and unmanageable. And I'm sure those users don't even know what, they, what do they have in their uh, tmax.conf files. So what would I recommend? I mean, I personally, I have like, uh, I just checked it today and I have a tmax.conf file that is just 42 uh, uh, lines of code. Uh, you can see it on a screenshot below and that is with the white space and with the comments. So, uh, you know, I think that's really manageable. I think it's really nice, you know. Uh, so how, how can you achieve that if, if that's something you'd like? So uh, I've, uh, I've told about this just earlier, there are some community standard uh, key bindings, and from them, um, there are plugins out there. And you know, this disclaimer I brought those plugins, and uh, they are really suitable for me. And those are Tmax Sensible and Tmax Pain Control. And I think those two you can shave off like 50 lines of code from your Tmax.conf. Um, and yeah, I'd recommend just using them. And if you're having any issues, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if, if you're having any issues, you can even build your own plugin uh, that's shareable with others. And uh, you, in that way, you can trim your tmax.com file. So yeah, that was the first thing I, want, I just wanted to share. Uh, second thing is uh, managing windows and sessions. You know? So if you're an uh, advanced tmax user, if you're using tmax daily, a classical workflow that you might have, and this is uh, something that I'd consider like a bad practice, is you have a, probably or maybe uh, a conservative number of sessions. So for example, you have just two tmax sessions. They're named work and private. And you know, uh, in one session, uh, for example, work, you manage multiple projects, your multiple group projects. Um, and uh, because of that, I mean, it's, it gets it quickly, it gets a bit crowded with, with, with windows. So uh, what you have to do, you have to maintain, uh, maintain you know, a list of uh, windows and list of panes. So uh, for example, if you're not working on a certain project, you have to uh, delete the, or like kill those windows because you're not using them. You want to use them for other projects. And this is, uh, this is a bit boring. You know, this is a uh, maintenance work uh, no one uh, likes to uh, do. And I would also recommend against doing this. And we'll see later how. And lastly, uh, as, a, you know, as a standard TMX user, you, you might um, have a strict window layout, for example, on the uh, top two thirds of the screen, you're using Vim, and on the bottom third of the screen, you're using terminal or you have some similar layout and uh, you might go even a step further and you, you uh, might have uh, you might have like a, a script a, a bash script that helps you uh, build those strict window layouts so this is pretty standard things and this is uh, you know something a lot of users uh, 
Like this is how a lot of users work. Now, what would I uh, think is a better way to work with Tmux and uh, you know just the philosophy of uh, of of, of uh, you know uh, using Tmux? So, first thing is Tmux makes terminals cheap, right? You should be able to create windows and sessions liberally. If you need one, just create it. Don't even think about it. You know. Uh, Next up, you know, there's no need to manage or delete un unused panes, windows, or sessions. Uh, that is maintenance work, and since uh, you know, Tmux make, makes everything cheap in regards to, to, to terminal windows, uh, there's really no need to do that maintenance, do that you know, uh, garbage collection, if you will. Next up, what uh, turns to work really well is uh, having one Tmux session per project, so your sessions correspond to projects. Uh, uh, so that is, uh, that, that's something that worked really well for me uh, and I wholeheartedly recommend that. And next up, uh, we mentioned this, having these strict uh, window layouts that some users are building scripts for and then they have to, if they are uh, preferred layout changes, then they have to go back and edit those scripts and update them and it's so much work and it shouldn't be so hard, right? So ideally, you would, what you wanna do is you, if you have something in mind, if you, if you want a certain layout, you should be able to create that layout on the go because it's easy and it's fast. And in fact, everything with Tmux, with Tmux should be fast and easy, right? So if, if you're having an issue with something, uh, I guess, you know, go online, check, uh, check how other users perform a certain action. For example, creating, uh, like we mentioned, you know, creating new sessions is uh, complicated uh, in Tmux by default, but there is a plugin, um, you know, Tmux Sessionist that makes this easy. And, um, you know, I think it's uh, worthwhile to go online, Google, and, uh, you know, see how to, to make everything in Tmux to be really easy and really fast. All right, and uh, yeah, uh, the third thing I want to talk about, uh, just quick, and this is the last thing. Uh, so once you once you like really get accustomed to creating uh, many windows and creating many sessions, and especially if you work on a large number of projects, not maybe a bit daily, but like in a certain week, you just you know you just uh, maybe commit or uh, uh, do a single commit or review of a number of projects, you will quickly end up with a large number of sessions, a large number of projects running within Tmux. On a screenshot on the right, you can see, uh, this, is a, this is like a list of the projects I'm currently running, and I think it's around 30 something projects. And it's just, I mean, I, I could probably delete a lot of them, but it's just that I don't care, uh, you know, uh, and uh, you shouldn't either, really. But what, what might bother you with, with so, so many Tmux sessions is uh, how are you going to switch those sessions? I mean, uh, look at the list. It's huge, right? So if you want to find, for example, the uh, demo, demo session, how are you going to find it? It like, takes a long time to you know, uh, visually parse uh, this list, find the demo, okay, and then you have to switch to the demo, and it takes time. And in fact, I mean, not only is it takes time, it's, it's slow. It's, um, so yeah, there is a prefix plus S uh, key binding. Uh, it's a Tmux default. But uh, yeah, for more than five projects, I've learned it doesn't work really well. What would be the recommended uh, way to, uh, for fast session switching? Uh, well, you know, uh, what I recommend, and basically I, this is a shameless plug here, I'd recommend using Tmux Sessionist plugin uh, with prefix plus G uh, key binding. What enables you, uh, it enables you to have this principle of telling Tmux what to do instead of visually parsing, you know, a, ses uh, a Tmux session list and then uh, choosing the session you want to, you want to go to. I have to credit Gary Bernhard. Gary Bernhard, Gary Bernhard is a creator of Destroyer Software here, and uh, basically th this is the principle uh, he 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 you know he was describing for Vim. 
but uh, I got it from him and it, uh, it worked really well for Tmux as well. Okay, uh, to the demo for this fast session switching. So, um, okay, there's the demo. Prefix plus G, I wanna go to Ruby uh, session and I just type R, U and, and boom. Okay, I think I'll have to uh, play this video again. So basically what, uh, what uh, Tmux session is enables you, it, it, it enables you to have session name completion. So in my mind, when I wanna switch to a, a certain project and, and a certain Tmux session, I, I mean, I can instantly uh, you know, remember what session is it. For example, uh, the first example in the video is a Ruby session, right? And it, oh, so it's really easy for me to type because I'm a, I'm a touch typist. It's really easy to type uh, Ruby or just RU uh, in the console and switch to it. In, in, okay. But, you know, if you had to visually parse this whole list, it would take you um, much longer um, you know, to switch sessions. Oops. Okay, so yeah, that was, that was the last thing and uh, I'd be really happy to take any questions and feedback. Um, there are not a lot of us left here. Yeah. Mark, Mark, you're uh, an <laughs> you're, uh, advanced Emax user, so maybe you have any, some question or something. Thank you for the great presentation. It's it's uh, extremely good that uh, you showed from the beginner standpoint, and in the end, you got this advanced stuff. For example, I didn't know about uh, this uh, plugin and uh, the typist thing. Apart from that, uh, we discussed uh, my questions at the beginning, so I don't have anything okay. here. All right, great, thanks.